This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. It's 731-23, last day of July. Show 514. So big week ahead for the markets again, Nick. Yeah, it is really a big week. We have Apple earnings and Amazon earnings both coming out. This will be the final uh, batch of the mega cap. So they're going to come out on Thursday, August 3rd. And a lot of traders will be waiting on that. I think that's going to be a very important day for the market as well. And, um, you know, later this week, we also have uh, the non-farm payroll report for July. So that's going to come out on Friday morning. And every market participant will be waiting to see what that has to say. Uh, the last job report was a little bit hotter than expected. And if you get too hot of a number, obviously, that'll put the Fed back in play that they have to raise rates and, you know, the whole story there. But, you um, all in all, this is an important number. Not that we believe it. I don't. Yeah. I, don't I think the number is fictitious. I find that all these numbers have been Goldilocks numbers lately, and mm. uh, I've seen that pattern before. So all in all, we'll just see what we get out here. But it, it's certainly a big week for the markets, and we have tons, carry. I mean, tons of earnings pouring in, you know, outside of Apple and Amazon, which are later this week. Well, I believe everything I see on the Internet. Nick, you know that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would they lie? Ah, it's a good question. It's a really good question. But, you know, if you ever look at how, and we've talked about it on here before, if you ever look at how these reports are uh, created or, or how they come to these conclusions, you have to chuckle at the stuff. I mean, it, it makes no sense to me, um, but um, it, it's what they use, I guess. So we have to go by it. Okay. So the market's up a little bit this morning. Yeah, we have a, a slightly positive day out here. Believe it or not, the NASDAQ 100 is slightly negative, but the composite itself is basically flat. And then you have the Dow up a little bit. The big winner of the day right now is the Russell 2000, and the small caps have been on fire. And today uh, they're up again by about a uh, little less than 1%. So small caps uh, leading the charge today. And uh, it's the final day in the month of July. Often when you have a strong month, um, the end of the, uh, the, the last day is usually positive. Not by much, just slightly positive. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Okay, so uh, PM even uh, catching a bid today. They've kind of recouped uh, their losses from last week. Yeah, precious metals. I got to tell you, they, they just seem resilient. With when, Every time I think we're in for a good dip, because I'm trying to get back into these precious metals, they just don't seem to let me buy on the cheap anymore. And uh, today you have gold up a little bit. You know, it's not a huge day by any stretch, but it's up four-tenths of 1%. Right now, sitting at around um, the nine, just under 1970. But the big mover today, Kerry, is silver. Silver's on fire. It's up almost 2%, one, one and three quarters percent right now. And it's flirting with that $25 level. And, you know, right now, this silver uh, trade, I mean, I'm, I'm itching to get back into this a little bit lower, but it just does not want me to buy this on the cheap. So I'm keeping the, uh, the pattern on the radar. It remains above the 20 day moving average. I mean, technically, silver is holding up very, very well. Now, there is resistance at 2550 on silver futures. So that's going to be the big level here. But watch this pattern for silver. If this thing starts to consolidate a little bit more, it's going to turn these charts up. And um, that's going to be setting up to go higher without going lower. And I'm hoping to see it go lower. But like I said, it's just not letting me in. All right. And uh, oil, oil has been on a tear. It's a back up over 80, 80 bucks uh, the barrel. Yeah, oil right now is sitting at around 81.40, trading higher again today. And um, I have upside to around the 85 to 85.50 area. So I think oil is going to continue to climb here, even if we do get a few pullback days. But uh, currently, uh, oil pattern has, has started to move higher, and I think you got a little bit more upside to go. I really think the 85 level, though, is going to be a sticking point for crude. Uh, but, you know, Kerry, nobody's talking about this, but you know what's on the rise again? Gasoline. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I know all the economic data says, well, you know, no inflation. We're going to go down. That's what they sell us on the financial news networks on TV. But 
Um, now, I mean, you're just looking at higher oil prices. I filled up my truck the other day, and I said, whoa, we're back up here again. Um, and that's going to start to hurt the consumer, as always. So uh, gasoline prices on the rise. Yeah. Yeah, well, I stopped filling up uh, when I got my EV, so I'm a little divorced from that. But I do watch the uh, prices, the indexes, and they've been heading up again. And <laughs> so uh, Bitcoin... Uh, not doing much today. Nah, Bitcoin is kind of um, a little bit lackluster today, but I, I have a few comments to make about Bitcoin this week, which I think are pretty important as we go into the week. Even though it's flat at the moment, um, the daily chart is very, very sloppy. So when you look at that daily chart, it really is ugly. It's not a pretty chart. It's all over the map. I wouldn't even rule a move down to 27,500 on Bitcoin futures and right now sitting at around 29,500 but um, that chart is ugly but here was something an observation I caught on Friday when I looked at the commercial money they have gone back to the short side they were overwhelmingly uh, long Bitcoin uh, but now the commercial money has flipped back to the short side so I think everybody should pay attention to that now with that said the weekly chart is still okay the weekly chart pattern uh, on Bitcoin is still okay I don't really see anything problematic with that, even though you've had a, a decent pullback from 32,000, um, you know, Bitcoin is very volatile, but uh, the weekly is still still very good. But if the weekly falls apart, this Bitcoin can really come, you know, come down in a big way. So uh, watch that. The commercial money has always been a good tell as long as I've been following Bitcoin futures here. And uh, they have gone back to the negative side after being overwhelmingly uh, long Bitcoin. They are now, now net short. Okay, so we got a few comments to go through here. Um, <clears throat> this guy, uh, MGR8440, nice interview. However, too bad he wasn't asked about his 50 US dollar per barrel crude prediction. He's been wrong on this one a lot. Well, the, so just to clarify that, and, and other people have asked me that too. So if you're a member of mine, you know we're not looking for $50 crude until we take out the May lows. And if that person goes back and looks at our archive shows on here as well, the same thing was said on here, you know, countless times. So, you know, again, um, I just love how people want to prove other people wrong. That's, the, I guess, the world we live in. But you have to take out the May low pivot. The May low pivot gets exceeded on a closing basis, especially a weekly closing basis, mark my words we're going to go down into that low $50 handle. So uh, be aware of that. And right now, give it give it the upside to 85. That's your sticking point. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'll buy it. Hey, so here's a guy. He said, I grew up in Webster, New York, back in the early 80s. At night, my friends and I would wail on our motorcycles in the Xerox industrial area. It was a big, wide road with nobody on it. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, so, you know, it's amazing. We just talked about Xerox, right, the other day and how, mm -hmm. you know, it was the computer company of computer companies and all these other companies, whether it's Microsoft, Apple, you know, they all stole the technology from Xerox right from under their nose. Yeah. And uh, here we are. But, uh, you know, Xerox was the, uh, it, 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 once upon a time, it was the king dog out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh <laughs> God, this one guy, man, he's obsessed with your call about uh, about oil, $50 oil. And it could easily go down there again. No one is expecting it to trade negative when it did, right? Yeah, and, and oil is very, very um, volatile, right? So we know I never in my lifetime saw ne oil trade negative like it did in 2020. Never, never mind going negative 40, right? So, I mean, I wish I had a big pond in my backyard. I would have loaded up on it. But uh you yeah. know, nobody knows that's going to happen. And and just so the guy knows, too, I, even though I'm not wrong on this call yet, because, um, you know, I give you stipulations and I tell that to my members, too. I say, hey, you know, if we break this level, this is where we're going to go to next. And if we, we break that level, this is where we're going to go to. And then this is where we're going to be buyers. And I tell them the reasons. Obviously, he's not a member. He's just looking for free information. But that's OK. That, that's what we want. We want people to come out and be intrigued. And then ultimately, maybe they want to come and join the program. But um, all, all in all, when you when you look at crude oil, it, it's a volatile instrument. It's nothing, and all commodities are. So you know, just be aware of that. They, these things don't go up or down in a straight line. But if they take out certain levels, 
they'll move higher. Just the same way I told my audience, uh, my members, uh, if if, if uh, crude gets above 75, it's headed to 85, it, you know, on a weekly close, and it did that. So that's where it's headed next. And then, you know, we'll see it stall out at that 85 level. All right. So uh, this one came in a while ago. Please ask Nick if it is too late to get on board with wheat, W-E-A-T, and UNG pump. Well, the UNG, I don't think it's too late. I think you could still do that. That's a monthly chart pattern. It's taken a while to really play out. We've been in it several times uh, throughout this year and made some good money. Now, um, if you want to get into wheat, I would wait for a setup on the chart. So I got into wheat carry at the dead low on the 31st of May. And I sold out when it hit the 100-day moving average on the 16th of May for over 16% on my second half position. That was a very quick, nice, fast trade. And since then, um, we've had a lot of noise, or, or I shouldn't say noise, I should say news in wheat. And, you know, you have Russia bombing uh, a wheat field in Ukraine and stuff like that. So wheat's been all over the map. But I never chase anything. If, a, if something goes up without me, it goes up without me. I just wait for the pullback or the pattern, and I'll get back in. But you will get another shot at wheat. Hopefully it's a little bit lower. I have my levels, which have not been hit yet. But uh, it's just about uh, waiting for the chart setup. But, yeah, you'll get another shot at wheat to the upside. All right. We'd like to hear that. Well, I think we'll leave it at that for now. Make sure you go over to Nick's site, inthemoneystocks.com, and see his extensive trading record, how he's beaten the averages for decades, the Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at Nick Santiago 01, at Kerry Lutz. Emails welcome, KL, at KerryLutz.com. Write your YouTube comments down below and we'll be sure to get to them at some point and that's it for today we'll talk to you on wednesday nick sounds good carrie